Workman's meeting to order. Uh, Ms. Miro, do we have a need for a non-public session? Yes, for personnel and legal. Okay, thank you. Next item on the agenda is the minutes of uh, June 27th. Does anybody have <coughs> any corrections or changes? Hearing none, can I have a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the minutes are passed. Um, we do not have any public hearings tonight. We're going to move on to the bulk vote. Um, we have um, two items to add. One is Partners for a Drug Free, free Community. They're asking us to put this decal in a window at the town hall. Does anybody have any objection to adding that to the bulk vote? Nope. Okay. And then uh, there was a MS 535. 535 um, that we also need to sign. I'd like to add that to the bulk vote. Everybody comfortable with that? Would you like a motion to that? I would like a motion for both of those. That would be great, Brad. I'll make a motion to add both of those items that you just mentioned to the bulk vote. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I have a motion to accept the bulk vote? I moved. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All righty. Down through. So number five, we're starting new business. This is the Ask Me uh, letter. Um, town Manager, do you have any comments or on this? I think I'm looking for some direction over who usually attends the, that first meeting, and I have also received a request from the police union, a similar request. My understanding is uh, Mr. Senecal, am I correct? That you're the negotiator? I have done it in the past, yes. He's in, so he will be the person, and, and I will be the alternate if he can't make it. That's agreeable with everybody. Um, and I would assume that you can talk to him and set a date? Yes. Is that okay with everybody? Yep. All righty. We'll move on. Next item is the load limit on the town docks. Um, Notice that. Um, do you want to present it or shall I bring up uh, the fire chief? Let's bring up the fire chief. Ah, Mr. Pinio, come join us and tell us about your calculations here. <clears throat> Good evening, James Pinio, fire chief, town of Wolfboro. Um, as the 4th of July approached, there was some concern regarding the occupant load on the town docks. Um, we, myself, Deputy Chief Saudi, had some communication with individuals who led us to believe back in early June that the signage could be removed because repairs had been done to the town docks to support an adequate load. Um, shortly thereafter, a conversation was had, and the town manager had asked me the question regarding the town docks and the signage. <clears throat> we did some further research, and it was determined that the signage should stay to the 15 people per 10 linear feet. Um, as a result of that, the following morning, I went down and measured each dock, did out the calculations. Through the calculations, we determined that the town docks, based on the 15 people per 10 linear feet, would be an occupant load of 1,365 people. Um, my conversation with the deputy chief, uh, with the planning director, and with the town manager, we felt satisfied that for the 4th of July fireworks event, that the occupant load, as calculated, would be sufficient 
for the number of people attending the fireworks. I was not able to personally make it down to the docks during the display. However, I did have staff that mingled around the docks. They felt that their observations, we were well under that occupant load for the town docks. Um, I think what we're looking for is maybe some guidance and a policy placement as to whether or not we sign all the docks, whether we, move, we remove the signage, or how we and, and or how we police that. I guess my feeling is that we would leave the signage up um, because that does tell them, and I think we did, is it on how many f people per uh, 10 feet? That's correct, 15 people per 10 linear feet. Because last year when this started, as I recall, and the other ones can verify, that we had the um, antique boats, Correct. which have a load, and they stayed at each, had a, somebody at each of the docks just to ensure that we didn't exceed the load, um, which my, seems to make sense. Yeah, my only concern going forward is um, I do know that um, there was some concern with Brewster about the people on the fields and whatnot. Um, and they had put up some barrier tape this year. Um, that barrier tape appeared to have been removed and people were infiltrating inside of that area. Um, my concern in a planning perspective is if Brewster says we don't want people here anymore, where are those people gonna land? They're gonna wanna go to the docks and at that point, how are we going to exceed that capacity? So from a planning standpoint, I'd like to get a better idea of in the future how we're going to manage a greater load at the docks. In my understanding, this was the emergency repair and that there is another set of repairs coming and it may be in this next year's warrant. Um, and and because my way. understanding it was the pilings that there was the issue with now. Becky, do you remember? Um, it, they're cross bracing as I understand it. I thought the cross bracing was, was done. It's completed, yes. But it's the piles they sit on, is it not? That's part of the issue. My understanding is commercial docks are supposed to have a load limit of 100 people per. I do not. Yeah, that's in the report. So I think those signs are going to have to remain for some time. So from now on, no matter what the length is on a commercial dock, or I would say these are residential, we aren't. So if we add to those docks, we're going to be under the same people from from my perspective um, a lot of people may not have an understanding of what 10 people per 15 linear feet look like um, if I could make a recommendation my recommendation would be an occupant load per dock so in other words instead of having that sign that says 15 Fine. yeah that makes sense all right this dock has a capacity of 180 people. I think that makes it, reduces the ambiguity and uh, <laughs> people have a much clearer understanding of the occupant load. But then that does, does that work for you when you say that a commercial dock you only can have 100 people? Uh, this work, his approach works for me at this point in time, yes. If the docks are expanded, then the load limit, the new code, or the correct commercial code has to go into effect. Any other board members have any comments? Uh, no, that's the first I've heard about the uh, the commercial load that was different than the formula that was you know arrived at here. Um, I was under the impression, like you had said, Linda, too, that part of the problem the cross bracing has been fixed on that, but there was an issue with the pilings and the integrity of them as far as supporting load as if they were there were new pilings that there was uh, not necessarily fatigue but there was some deterioration or something but actually Dave probably speak to that better than, than I can yeah the reports was concerned with the cross braces that went across the pilings some of them were the straps were twisted which got corrected along with the bracing so I don't think the pilings themselves were the problem it was the timbers that went across that were tipped and they were straightened out and re-strapped as part of that bracing on the 
on the pilings themselves. Right. That's what, what my understanding was from the report that we have and also when the work was done. And I, my understanding that work was done, but then there was a question asked to a structural engineer, and he had, I thought, an issue with the pilings mm. were not driven down well, or far enough or something. I, I think the piling issue has to do with along the river and not the physical docks, but you can look it up in your report. That's what I understood from the report, that the pilings at the docks now were fine. It was that some of the timbers that were on the top were twisting, and there were pictures of those straps that were pulled off. So I don't have any issues with the pilings from the report that Teague did. I think the, the, take, the big takeaway is um, Teague came back and said the week of the 4th that no, those, that signage, 15 people per 10 linear mm -hmm. feet, has to remain in play. I think that's the big takeaway yes. from this. Um, so, I mean, we that's can take... fine. There's a lot of people here. So I guess yeah. my only concern here would be, and I agree with you, I think a number of people is a lot easier for the general public and everybody yeah. to understand, mm -hmm. and I feel no problem putting that out there in the signage. I would like a further analysis about if it is a commercial dock, how many people could be on it, because if we expand right. these docks, and by any chance Brewster doesn't let us, we're going to have way more people wanting to be down there, and then we're even saying there are less people that could be on it than there is today, and I think we need to check into that and make sure we have a clear understanding of what's going on. Matt, you have to? loads that can be met on the recreational docks is 34 PSF, and that equates to the 10 by 8 that we're talking about right now. The existing commercial dock, it meets the standard of 100 PSF, so if you calculate out that number based on the, 50, the 10 by 8, there's significantly more load that's allowed in the commercial dock. The intent is to get the recreational docks up to that 100 PSF as well that the existing commercial dock meets. So ultimately, we're not sure exactly what that number is, but based on the 10 by 8 that we're hearing now, and it's basically three times that amount, we'd be tripling the density that would be allowed on an existing okay, section of dock. so we would be able to. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we change the signage down at the town docks to represent the number of people who are allowed on each of the docks instead of... Uh, 15 people per linear feet. I'll second that. Do we have any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Does that do it for you? Works for me. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your higher math. I appreciate that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next item on the agenda is the Railroad Depot Building Discussion uh, Space Vacant by the Nursery School. Um, I asked Becky uh, to put this on the agenda. Um, one of the reasons I have it on is I think we should do a building evaluation of that space to get some kind of idea what kind of um, repairs or maintenance would have to be done in order for us to rent it. Um, that, and w I know that it's a nine month, but we, I think we need some figures on, on uh, the, the shape of that section of the building. Does anybody else have any questions or agree, disagree? No, I agree. Dave? It's fine. Dave? Okay. So we'll get, just figure out what would need to be done. I don't know what the tile is made of, whether we have an issue with the tile. We have doors that are cut. We have bathrooms that had windows in it because it was to meet for children and we, I would it, doubt that we will re-rent it to uh, somebody that has kids. So if you can get that, and then we might have a figure for the Also, budget. Mary, who's in the audience, you know, can advise on a prospective tenant as, as to the desirability. Well, I walked it with Mary, and I got to see the, the bathroom uh, that had, a, you know, things because they need to be able to see it's in there if they're children and doors that are cut. We need to do something about that so we at least know what it is. All righty. We'll move on. Uh, 
the PA inventory of taxable properties for 2019. Um, my understanding is all we need here is a signature, is that correct? Yes. Uh, do I have a motion from somebody that we signed uh, that document? So moved. Second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a fine schedule for violating the ordinance prohibiting jumping from the Witten Neck Bridge. And uh, we have the chief here, but I think we also have some people in the audience who may want to speak to uh, this, uh, um, this ordinance. Is the board agreeable to let other people speak? Yep. No problem. Chief. So thank you very much. I'm uh, Chief Dean Rondo, the uh, Chief of Police for the Town of Wolfboro. And uh, so just uh, to uh, build some foundation for those of us uh, who may not be uh, tracking on the issue, about a year ago uh, we had some Utes uh, that were jumping off uh, the, uh, the Whitneck Bridge and they jumped in front of a boat and it seemed to be somewhat of a game uh, that these kids were playing to see how close they could come to the boat or perhaps splash the occupants inside, I'm not sure which. Uh, and it, it created uh, an emergency situation, an emergency situation for the folks that were, were inside the boat. They tried to avoid the children. They were concerned uh, now that the kids are, uh, have jumped and are now underneath the, the boat. And one of the occupants uh, stood up just as the boat now was going under the bridge and, and hit their head. And it caused some permanent injuries, uh, long-lasting injuries. And, um, and that's not what we want. Uh, there is a town ordinance that prohibits jumping from the Whitneck Bridge. I do recognize that this has been part of Wolfboro culture for probably forever. Uh, but we need to change it, okay, because now we've had a citizen injured. Um, and the danger to children doing that and getting chopped up by propellers or getting caught up underneath the boat or, or some other mishap is, uh, I think, just too great. Uh, my agency is not necessarily equipped to go down there and, and, and rescue somebody in the water uh, very easily. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, resources and assets to do that. Um, and even though it's, it's uh, in close proximity to the public safety building, it's still going to take fire rescue uh, a few minutes to get down there. And um, so I think what we need to do is have an ordinance that has some teeth in it, that gives me some enforcement uh, capabilities uh, to put violations in front of a judge uh, and have the judge act on those. Uh, right now, it's, an, it's a violation level offense as a town ordinance, but it doesn't set a penalty assessment. And therein lies part of the problem. The other thing I think we need to do, and it's, uh, it's become now a game, so to speak, that some boaters now are coming in. <clears throat> the parents are dropping their children off. They're, they're, they're climbing up the bridge abutments, the rocks, and jumping into the channel. Um, to, to try and say, ha, 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 I'm not jumping off the bridge, so to speak. I'm jumping off the bridge abutment or the rocks, whatever. Hey, it's swimming in the channel, okay? The intent, uh, the prohibition, you're, you're still violating the original intent of the prohibition, okay? We don't want you jumping off the bridge. We don't want you being a hazard of navigation. So those are the issues. And as seemingly insignificant or innocuous as it may seem, uh, someone's going to get hurt. And that's what we're trying to prevent. This is about public safety. So I put together a fine schedule uh, that I think is, is reasonable. Uh, I, I do know that uh, Mr. O'Brien, who's not here, said, hey, cut it off at three, and, and, and you know, they get three bites of the apple. Uh, and if they don't get it after the third warning, make it $999. However you want to do that, that's fine with me. Um, I just made it somewhat gradual. Uh, certainly, I think after six offenses, if, if you're not getting the message, uh, then, then, then you deserve to be WAP $999. And, and you can speak to the man and woman in the black robe and, and explain to them why you're having a tough time getting the message. Uh, those would be my recommendations. So it's the channel that I'm concerned about, the channel you know, there at the bridge. So the bridge and its curtilage. All right, this would include the bridge abutment. This would include the bridge itself or the rocks that make up the bridge. Uh, but if you're swimming in the channel, if you're jumping off any part of the bridge, you're wrong and you're subject to these penalties. And that would be, that would be my intent. So however we want to make that amendment, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of. And I'll, I'll let you, uh, if, if you want to have some folks come up and speak after this, I'll, uh, 
the stay I'll, around uh, turn, turn it over to them. But the problem is persisting. It's not abating. In fact, it's, it's probably gotten worse. And so now they're trying to actively uh, evade and avoid the, the police. And um, so now I think we, we have to really do something before somebody gets hurt again. And I've gotten many complaints from um, people on Lake Wetworth about the jumpers there and the concern. I know I have some people in the audience who would like to speak. Would somebody like to come on up and just state your name so we know who you are? Hi, I'm Trina Crochet, and I am a Witten Neck Road resident. Can you so just I, kind of pull the microphone down? Yes. Perfect. So, yes. So um, I not only see the kids jumping off of the bridge quite a bit, but I am the injured party that um, received a concussion last June, a year ago June, when two very young boys jumped in front of our boat. And because I panicked that we were running them over, when I jumped up, I uh, hit the side of my head on the concrete bridge. So one year and one month later, I have permanent hearing loss, I have tinnitus, I have memory issues, and I have blurred vision. And after spending a lot of money with insurance deductibles and co-pays and seeing a lot of specialists, the damage is, the consensus is that the damage is permanent. That's just my experience, but we were, as residents of Witten Neck Road, concerned about these kids because many times they're not accompanied by an adult. They're all really young, usually, um, you know, perhaps 16 years and 12, 14 year age, but a lot of them are what we would guess at maybe 10 years old, eight years old. And again, they're doing this without any parents um, that are with them or accompanying them. And then as um, was previously mentioned, now what tends to happen is the parents are pulling their boat up and pulling alongside a dock that is right there at the bridge, letting the children jump out of the boat onto the dock, which is a homeowner's dock, climb up the rocks, and jump off the bridge while they watch from the boat. <laughs> so it is something that it's, it's unfortunate that I was the one that had to be injured, but hopefully whatever might happen with your decision would be significant enough where the word would get out that the town is very serious about enforcing this and that there are consequences, and the consequences obviously are going to be hitting the parents in the pocketbook. So that's what I would like to say. Thank you very Thank much. You. Is there somebody? Come on up, state your name for the record. Yeah. Why don't you put this picture on TV if it would go? I don't think you can see it. Hi, I'm Matthew Platch. Uh, my mom owns the house right next to the bridge, and I'm there all. The, I'm there a lot, and uh, she owns the, the the dock. She owns that dock. So what happens every day in the summer, all all day long, parents will come up and and dock their boat, either at my dock or just kind of hang out in the water there. The kids will jump off, they'll climb up the rocks, or they'll run through my mom's yard and then up onto the road and onto the bridge. And they jump off, and sometimes they, they get on the railing and jump off. And they climb up the rocks, and sometimes they trip and fall and, and, and jump off. Uh, I believe the town probably owns the rocks that are next to the bridge. Uh, you know, it's part of the, yes, that the is support part of structure it. for the bridge. Yeah. My mom owns the, the shoreline to the bridge. And so whenever they're doing that, they're trespassing. They're trespassing on the dock. I haven't been calling the police, but um, I've been telling the parents, you know, this is private property. This is against the law, and you're going to get fined if you continue, continue to do this. And usually they leave right away. But uh, so last week, for example, a couple from Massachusetts came up in the afternoon uh, around 1 o'clock, dropped their kids off at the bridge, and the kids were there for the next five hours just hanging out in that waterway, on the rocks, eating lunch, jumping. Mm. Some girls came. They jumped. Uh, as, 
And I said to the couple when they came back, I said, what do you do? You know, this isn't a public beach. There are three public beaches in town. And they, they said, the, the man said, oh, I used to jump here when I was a kid. I said, well, this isn't where you, you should leave your kids all day. I don't want to be responsible <laughs> for them. Uh, as I drove, I was over at my mom's house just now before I came over. There were two kids jumping on. So it really is a serious problem. And it's, someone's going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt on the rocks. But it's also kind of a nuisance with the trespassing constantly going on. I, I just, and I don't want to be a fun spoiler. I know, you know, if the town wants to support these activities, put up a, you know, a, a, a dock at one of the public beaches with a, with a diving board. Well, you know, we've you, taken our diving board there, off there, our there once, there, <laughs> yeah. there once was a, 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 an, a an Albi beach. There used to be with LMA. There used to be a diving platform. You kids would run up and jump off. Yeah. It was a floating platform. Yeah. yeah, I think there was one at Brewster Beach. There but, was a diving board. But I think there was a liability yeah. concern with that. No, I'm not proposing we do that. So but it, they, it doesn't exist anymore. And so that's all I want to say. I would strongly support. A, a real schedule of fines and post it and then I can you know we can have some teeth and hopefully no one else gets hurt this was a real serious tragedy I mean, so well thank you thank you, thank you. and very quickly because we don't want to flog a dead horse I'm Kevin Llewellyn I live at 20 Whitten Neck I'm uh, Trina's husband the only thing I wanted to, um, to add to this was what I heard earlier about giving three chances I think that's far too lenient because by the time the police get down there, most of them have gone. So for the police to catch them in the act in the first place is difficult. To give them three chances, they may never get caught for the whole summer. So I would rather give them one chance and then hit them immediately with a fine, let's say of the order of, oh, of, the order of $100, say, and then go up from there for second offense, third offense. And I really think... If two kids are dropped off by their parents and they're jumping from the bridge, and when the parents come and pick them up, we'll go, Mom, Dad, I got $200 worth of fines for you to pay. It'll soon stop. They've all said what I wanted to say, so uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Let me, let me read. It says, offense number one, $100. Fence number two, 200 Offense number three, 300 Offense number four, 500 Offense number six, 600 the sixth offense is 999 dollars and you can have criminal charges so that's what they're looking at at doing it my only concern is <clears throat> that we get signage up there and it sounds like we need it up on the bridge and down by the water so there's no misunderstanding here I, I think that's very important. I, I agree with you. I think that signage up there with, with perhaps, uh, you know, the, you know, this will be strictly enforced and there are fines associated with it. And also the, uh, you know, uh, the, the fines will apply to juveniles 12 years and up. We really can't go be below that uh, because of the way the state laws are written. But 12 years and up, uh, we, we enforce tobacco violations at 12 years and up in, in adult court. So um, I think we're, we're okay to, to do this ordinance at this at 12 years and up. Uh, and if, if uh, Matthew, if you would like, and if I have your permission, I'll, I'll go ahead and enforce the no trespassing on your property. And that's, that's a misdemeanor offense on, on its face. So that makes that, that piece very easy for me. Uh, I just need your permission. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay thank you, ma'am. My, my only other concern is that what they're telling us is that by the time you get there, they're gone. Will you think of more creative ways maybe to get police down there so we may catch them? I'm, I'm actually a very creative guy. I think we can solve that problem. Okay, good. You, you got you to go up uh, to the... I believe that the, um, the current captain does have regular patrols that go down there. Um, I've seen patrol cars at, on an ad hoc basis. They come down, they turn around, they go back up. So I think it is already on their route. But uh, clearly, you know, especially with the summer, with a huge increase in our population, I know it's uh, taking away valuable police time, if you like. So uh, I appreciate how difficult it is. And then if I, I'm in visual range of the bridge, if I call it in, 
and some officer has to come all the way through summertime traffic from the police station unless there happens to be a, you know an officer on the north side of town so uh, that's that's all i wanted to add really thank you Senator, do you have anything to say yeah a couple yeah. things i know the just one more thing i'm sorry we we do have a number of police officers that live in that area uh one of which is my detective and i know a lot of the the offenses are occurring on the weekends my my cousin also lives down in that area so i'm down there a lot on the weekends uh visiting her and her husband uh if you look at my recommendation on the the uh with the email i sent to the town manager and the, and the board of selectmen um if we we make this enforceable by any peace officer uh we also have state troopers down there that can enforce it as well as marine patrol okay so if, if we do that i think we're, we're we're covered we're fine and we will it may take us a little bit of effort but we will catch the errant uh, boaters and and uh, i'm pretty sure i get my hands on a german u-boat and we can put it on <laughs> patrol there on uh in that area of uh, of uh, the lake so thank you i can make a motion if you want okay. yeah, I, I think that um somewhere there we need to put in the abutments uh, with neck bridge and abutments, bathers and jumpers. I think the 12 year old and up, that's pretty much a statutory thing. And I would like to make it uh, for discussion three offenses 100, 200, and 500. Make it three offenses. I think if we get to four and five, we're getting a little out there. I think we ought to cut it quicker than that, uh, personally. So I don't have any issues with the offenses being 100, 200, 500. That would be, if you want a motion, I can do that. And also add, like I said, after Whitneck Bridge and abutments, abutments be added to that mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. I'll make that in the form of a motion at this point for well, discussion. Can you, okay. Um, all right. Do I have a second to that motion? Second. Okay. I was going to go down the line. Brad, do you have any comments? No, I like that idea. I, th I agree. I think the getting up to that sixth offense would be very difficult. Um, like the, the folks here said, by the time PD, through no fault of their own, obviously, but it, sometimes it just takes time to get out there and the, the kids are apt to be gone, so it would be difficult to catch, catch one every offense that they're there. So I would agree. I think going through first, second, third offense, then the fourth offense would jump right down to that 999, followed by the criminal charges, and uh, we'll skip that fourth and fifth one and just, you know, jump right into the teeth of it. Dave Bowers, do you have any comment? And why don't you read the motion as uh, we're going to be voting on with the numbers, but I agree with it. Okay, I would like to have, I'd like to suggest another change. We do first offense 100, second offense 200, third offense 500, and that we put the criminal charges on at that point. You know, forget, if, they, if the parents after they've spent $800 has not, you know, <laughs> Done anything that we should have the criminal charges there because I think that it's going to take some time to get this to stop. Dave? Yeah, do we also need to, Dean, put in there, as you mentioned, this ordinance may be enforced by any sworn uh, peace officer? Yes, you do. And I would also like, I would also recommend that you put in there the, the swimming within the channel, uh, the bridge, its abutments, the curtilage, and the channel. So it's not just the jumping, but it's the swimming or bathing. The, the statute speaks to bathing, which is swimming. And I, th I think if we, we put something like that in there where, look, you can't be, you can't be in the channel. Is right? it channel? You're, you're, the channel being that, that stretch of water, you know, that goes underneath the bridge. You can't be there, okay? You can be, you know, swimming off of Matthew's dock. That's fine. That's not the channel. But if you're, if you're you know, within, say, 10 feet of the bridge, in the water, that's the channel. Okay, and I think we need to define, define that. You, and, yeah. What we're gonna do is we'll get, we'll, let's get the uh, different things we want added, vote it, and then somebody can work on the wording because you want the curtilage, you want the swimming, we want it abutments, um, we want to make sure any police officer can do it. Any peace officer. Yeah, and we want to define what we mean by the channel. Right, and I think, I think you can do that by saying 10 feet out from either, either side of the bridge. That is, that is the channel. Yeah. So if you're, if you're in that, the width from 10 feet from the bridge, yep. that's a channel. You're, you're a hazard in navigation at that point. 
And we're trying to, what we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent somebody from getting chopped up by propellers. Mm -hmm. All right, because right. That, that's going to be an ugly, that'll be an ugly event. Yeah, and there are also rocks. I mean, that whole thing comes out. You jump right. at the wrong place, you can also You're going to get hurt. Yeah, no doubt about that. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Dave, are you willing to change your motion to sure. add all of the above that we just talked about? Yes. Is that yeah. good yep. enough? And you have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, and uh, the captain, uh, I mean the chief and Becky can put that together in writing. And yeah. But it's approved today. And that's for first offense, 100, second offense, 200, third offense, 500, and can be a um, criminal charge. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, let's move on to old business. Um, Building Committee, Libby Museum. Mr. Harriman, I'm going to turn that over to you. Thank you. Um, at our Friends of Libby Museum, we had a discussion about this, and the member, we elected a member from that committee, from the Friends of Libby, to uh, be on that, uh, being John Askew. So my recommendation would be to, I think if we spoke last time, was to have a member from the Friends of Libby, which would be John Askew, We'd have um, um, Alana from the uh, from the Libby, the director, and we would also have a member. We didn't decide the who would be there from the one of the departments in Tanya, whether it would be Mr. Ford, Mr. Sullivan, or Mr. Tasker, um, whichever one would be more appropriate to serve on that from from the department um, standpoint. I believe we we talked about having. Uh, Becky serve on that as a town manager and we also talked about having a offer a member from the uh, foundation that's uh, funding it um, they haven't gotten oh, back yeah foundation okay uh, yep from the Bieber foundation there yeah um, didn't get back to me with the name yet but I'm assuming it would be um, by the gentleman lives here in town that kind of presented okay. it, Alan Harding Alan presented Hard. it to us so, so. We put Alan Hard it will we can vote him on if he doesn't want we can cross him out another right. time yep <laughs> yep and I believe that was what we had for so so we're going to have uh, Alan Harding Becky John Askew Brad yep. Alana and then we're going to have and do we put the staff this is a a, a philosophy for you do we put a sla staff member on as a member or a staff member as a kind of consultant to the group? I'll have to give that some thought, but we would also have the architect there. Who oh, would, would be a consultant. Yes, yes. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, Dave Owen generally had staff as kind of consulting and not members of the committee, which would also right. question about Alana. But I don't know how True. you want to do it. You can do it whatever way you want. Would you like us to put them on as committee members now? Or? I think that the director, Alana, should be on as a committee member. Okay. I think um, I should direct staff in whatever way I feel necessary as we move along. Okay. So we'll put, put you on as a staff, and then if you think other staff should be there, you'll do that. So it'll be Alan, Becky, John, Brad, and Alana. Yep. Yes. That, does anybody want to make a motion? I'll move that we put those people on that uh, committee for the Libby Museum Building Committee. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Take care of that. Uh, next item is the asset management plan. Becky? Okay, so um, with the assistance of staff, I have been collecting all of the asset management plans. And today, uh, Matt Sullivan was kind enough to show me his repository associated with the master plan committee. And so any asset management plans that are prepared and finished, he has also been adding to that portion of the website. So there will be public access to review those at any time that's convenient. Um, what we're struggling with a little bit are the asset management plans for buildings, which is Abenaki, this building, Bob Whalen, et cetera. 
So we did have a preliminary review of what had been collected for data to date, and the consultant will be coming on July 26th to give us a more detailed presentation of what they've collected so far. And I'm going to ask Matt to come up, and will you explain to the people in the audience and to the public how they access all that great data you have put on yes. the town website. Yes, absolutely. So the, the repository that uh, the town manager is referring to is actually associated with the master plan process. So the master plan committees, the five existing committees, have been using this data to drive a lot of their work, including Brad's group and Linda's groups as well. Uh, currently, the best way to access this information is actually through the planning board website. On the planning board website, there's a master plan update tab. And through that master plan update tab, you'll be brought right directly to the Google Drive that houses all of the information. If you have any questions about a specific document or anything to that effect, just feel free to call my office, obviously. I would say there are probably hundreds of documents that currently exist in that space right now, so if you're looking for something, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone and just ask, because frankly, I'm having a hard time finding resources right now myself. Uh, with that said, I hope that that repository will be useful for department heads and other uh, elected officials moving forward. I think it's the first time that we've really had a comprehensive effort to bring all these resources together in one place. So it's something that will certainly live on beyond the master plan as a project as well. Now, is the heading that says asset management plans when they go in there, or are they under all these different... No, groups? so they're actually under different uh, committees right now. That's the only drawback to the current structure. However, I would say that the long-term intent is to have some sort of repository that's grouped by document type. Right now, they're really grouped by chapter topic that they're associated with, but I think long-term, the solution would be to do just that. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The only thing that I would add to that is these are living documents. So obviously, if, if there's a recommendation that something supersedes something on the list for 2019, for example, you know, we're always prone to having things break, things break that you didn't expect. And so even if there's useful life is 30 years and something fails this year, it would be moved up on the, on the list and in, in the working document. Okay. Anything else? Okay, does anybody have any old business or other business? Hearing none, we'll go on to committee reports, and I'll start down there with uh, Mr. Senecal. I've had a couple with uh, Land Use Committee, the, also the Committee on Town Buildings. Also had a meeting with Linda the other day, reference to Russ Pond. Uh, and I think that's about all I have. Uh, you went to, did you go to the luncheon for Peter Chamberlain? Yes. Okay. Did go to that as well. Okay, Brad? Uh, yeah, last night we had a planning board meeting. Um, we had two public hearings that were uh, both continued. Um, last week we also had a master plan subcommittee meeting for the transportation and uh, infrastructure committee and also a Friends of Lee Museum meeting that I referenced earlier, talking about putting the member on for the uh, building committee. And that was about it for me. Okay, I w I'm with um, Brad on the infrastructure and transportation chapter. I went to the luncheon for Peter, and I attended the town's milfoil committee. Um, we are having an issue trying to get our contractor here, who's supposed to do the hand pulling and the DASH unit, um, the committee is concerned at the growth that's in Back Bay, and so we are hoping that we can find somebody to do that for us. We have a contract out with a company, and they haven't sent it back signed, so we're still in limbo here. Dave? I have to the Library Committee, the Heritage Committee, and interfacing with the Wolfboro Strucker Society that wants to expand and uh, make a few changes, and. Uh, I think I'm also Grand Central Depot for uh, questions about Wolfboro history, which is just fine. Absolutely. We count on you for that. All right. Uh, questions from the press? Questions from the public? Okay. Can I have a motion to go into non-public? Do I have a second? Second. Dave? Yes. Brad? Yes. Yes? Okay, 